Okay, here we go again. China conducted a 13-hour military drill over the weekend uh, and early Monday this morning surrounding Taiwan. There's something special about this particular military drill. Um, not only it is the biggest so far by the PLA, involving more than 100 vessels and 100 aircrafts, but it was not pre-announced. Basically, it started right after PLA made the announcement. That's unusual, okay, by international standard. In fact, I believe that the Taiwanese military actually caught wind of the military drill by finding out through satellite or intel from the United States that massive troop movement uh, was happening on the Chinese side. In addition, when it was launched, the PLA did not tell anyone when it will end. Usually you make the announcement that it will last, you know, six hour, 12 hour or a day or two. This time, PLA didn't, okay? Now, I want you guys to listen very closely to what Professor Jin has to say today in this video. It's a short one. And before I play the video, I want to re-emphasize, okay? I said it before, that Professor Jin and people like Professor Zhang Weiwei represent almost the official Chinese narrative uh, at a civilian level, uh, if you know what I mean, because they can say something the Chinese government want to say, but just cannot. And you have to really listen to what Professor Jin says here closely today, okay? Let's go. According to the official Chinese government released video, this new military drill is a response to the provocative speech President Lai of Taiwan gave on October 10th. I think there are multiple purposes to this military drill. First of all, it is a deterrence against the Taiwan independent movement. Second is to warn against international interference, showing Chinese government's resolve in protecting its sovereignty. From the Chinese perspective, it's not only that President Lai and certain groups of Taiwan independent supporters are becoming more vocal about their intention, but also that there are more countries in the world that is trying to participate in interfering with Taiwan issue, including massive arms sales from the United States to Taiwan in recent months, also selling military vessels across the Taiwan Strait. Secondly, I think it is required because our soldiers need those military drills in order to get familiar with those potential unification operation that is coming. The soldiers need to get used to the landscape, the routine of the operation, so when the time comes, they can execute their orders without hesitation and achieve unification. If my audience wonder about when the real operation will happen, I've said it before, the central government does not have a time schedule, and it will not provide one. Just like President Xi said, we will try our best to achieve unification through peaceful means. But if it gets to the point with no other alternative, and we have to use military means to achieve unification, we have to take into consideration multiple factors. I've said it. The military capability of the Chinese army is not a problem here. But the main concern is the economic side. Our economic size is much bigger than that of Russia. But our economy is much more fragile than that of Russia. Our energy, our food require import. In addition to other minerals. Overall, our market is closely integrated with the rest of the world. So we need to prepare to stock up on critical minerals and resources. If we go through with military operation, some of the markets, for example, in the developed North NATO countries will be lost to us, at least temporarily. We need to put that into calculation. We need to support our friends in the global South so they can replace the countries we lost. All this planning and preparation takes time. There are also external factors. 
important events that happen in other places around the world that give us the opportunity, the window to strike. I have no doubt that the Chinese government is preparing for all of this. Finally, we need to prepare the narrative as well, because even within China, the decision to whether use military force or not is still heavily debated in the public. And also on the international stage, in which countries might not expect China to strike suddenly. If I have to draw a conclusion today regarding all this, the Chinese internal preparation now for the unification operation is the priority. An international crisis which provides China the opportunity window that is secondary. For people who watch the Taiwanese news media, you can almost read and taste okay, the atmosphere in those geopolitical commentators um, who were talking about this uh, particular military drill. You can see it on their face, okay? They know that the inevitable might be coming. They don't even want to spend that much time comparing, okay? Um, what the Chinese PLA is using for this military drill, uh, what kind of equipment, uh, how does the number stack up? For example, they have 10, we have five, but they're in the open, we're in a more concealed environment and we can strike uh, where they are unexpected. There's not that many talks like that anymore because they understand that without a third party coming in directly to help, Taiwan is not going to withstand a PLA incursion. So they don't even bother to talk about it. They, you, you can just tell. It's kind of depressing, to be honest. Okay, uh, let me show you guys uh, this guy. Um, the Navy Commander Admiral of Taiwan, okay, Tang Hua. I'm not good with army ranking things, but I think he's the number one commander in chief when it comes to the Navy. Um, Taiwanese can correct me if I'm wrong. He said something that angered many Taiwanese politicians and he's being both realistic and pessimistic at the same time. Okay, he says something like, I just hope we do not do something that gave PLA the excuse to turn the military drill into a real operation. So almost saying that if the real thing happened, Taiwan won't be anywhere ready to defend itself. If you guys listen closely to how Professor Jin present himself uh, in the video, to me, okay, it makes me feel like, um, you know, one of those drama movies uh, in which the parents are getting ready to divorce, but they still act in front of their kids that everything is going to be fine. You know, we're going to get through this and they're older kids, you know, those teenagers knows what's going on and their parents are just lying to them and things are not fine and their parents are going to split eventually. This is how it feels like to me right now, um, that all the talks of China now regarding peaceful unification, everyone knows that it's close to impossible, okay? It's about whether letting Taiwan go independent or use military to complete the unification. And when it comes to military, my audience have to put aside all the hopes and you know wishes and look at the reality of a military operation. In an event such as a real military operation, okay, it is not only about when Chinese army is most prepared. It is about when your opponent is most vulnerable, okay? And that opponent includes Taiwan and its allies. So events such as Russia using tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine or Israel and US open ground operation against Lebanon, Iran or Syria, something like that, or potential, let's say, civil unrest or disturbance before and after the US election, those are potential windows to make a military move to complete the operation while the international community is still too uh, distracted. Okay. 
Now, I know many of my audience are China leaning. They are saying things like, um, don't worry, Richard, you know, time is on China's side. The US is going to collapse eventually and Taiwan can unify peacefully with China. You're just warmongering, things like that. Let me try to put for a metaphor here to see if I, I can perhaps um, redirect your way of thinking. Imagine if I am China, okay? I'm in my 30s and the United States is like Biden <laughs> in his 80s. Everything is declining, but it's pointing a gun at me, all right? And that gun is Taiwan. And by killing or wounding me, the U.S. get to extend its life for a few more decades, uh, at least. So whether he can kill me or not, or whether the gun, Taiwan, can survive such engagement is irrelevant. He's going to pull that trigger before he dies. And he's going to pull that trigger likely when I'm most vulnerable, when China is most vulnerable and distracted, okay? The quicker the US decline, the more likely he will pull the trigger sooner and make that gamble, all right? So if I'm China, I will have to take that pistol away from him when he's most distracted and most vulnerable as well. And I'm going to do that when I see that the cause and the consequence of such action is acceptable, tolerable, okay? It's not about the military gap here. It's about the opportunity cost. So yes, when people say to me that, okay, right now the gap, let's say is three to one in China's favorite. So Taiwan will be less likely to take independent routes in let's say 10, 20 years when the gap is increased to let's say 10 to one, you know, Chinese army has a 10 to one advantage towards the Taiwanese army. That's not the way Chinese look at it, okay? The Chinese look at it this way. Taiwan is not trying to build a plan to fight off Chinese incursion. They're building tools to discourage the action to begin with, which means that if I am Taiwan president, okay, and I'm pro, independent and I want my best shot at my goal, what I will do instead is developing, let's say, mid-range and long-range missiles and develop nuclear weapons, things like that. So even if the Chinese military is much stronger than mine, and eventually it will get even stronger than what it is right now, I have the tools that can inflict catastrophic damage to the Chinese. So they will not even consider taking that action to begin with. So from the Chinese perspective, it is not about how many military equipments you can get to overwhelm the Taiwanese military, um, whether you can, you know, annihilate the Taiwan military in, let's say, 24 weeks or 24 days or 24 hours even. Um, it is about can you prevent Taiwan from launching that hypersonic missile that they might be developing or US is sending them or whatever with nuclear warhead towards, you know, Beijing or towards the three gore stem. So it's a race against time right now. Yeah, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next video.